do you find folks? I saw a filmmaker on your badge. Uh, I'm going to hold on. Let me see if I can guess the name. Aaron. <laughs> Correct. You look like an Aaron. I knew it. Nobody <laughs> told me. I don't have any earpieces. So <laughs> I did see your badge, though, before you sat down. So I revealed my magic name. trick. Good yes. Name. Aaron, very nice to meet you. And you are joined by? My Brigitte. Brigitte. Jose, I'm Brigitte. The producer, producer, producer and my wife's wife first and foremost. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. What's awesome. the film? One Pint at a Time. One Pint at a Time. One Excellent. Can I see this? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Two of them right there. Wonderful. Welcome. Let's take a look. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh! you have one of my favorite subject matters. Um, so let's talk about the film here, One Pint at a Time. Um, yes. First off, let's, let's, let's talk about you guys. It, it, you said uh, production partners and partners in life, right? Yes. Yeah, so husband and wife, first and foremost, and second and second most. And then <laughs> after that comes the, the filmmaking part. Sure. Because that's my, the work that I do full time and, you know, she moved to where I was and we started working together. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, that's kinda, fantastic. We were literally just having a conversation about support in relationships. We had a, a woman on just a few minutes ago who was whose son is a composer for films. And she was talking about encouraging his they come from a family of doctors. And of course, uh, in their household, you know, maybe an artistic field was not the first choice that they want them to go into. But she said that she felt that it was important with her children to really encourage that creative outlet and now he is you know exceeded her wildest expectations and hopes and joys and so i think it's wonderful when people can come together on a unified thing and support creative passion and put out something um so first i just want to say that that's beautiful and i love that thank um, you thank you, thank you. Uh, but so as far as this film goes tell me one pint at a time what is the kind of foundation of this film? So basically, it's the first feature length documentary that's ever been produced that focuses exclusively on the black experience in craft beer. So basically, okay. as you know, patron to brewer to beer brand owner and influencer. Sure. So we kind of talk about a little bit about the, the history uh, of, you know, African brewing history and Egyptian history briefly. And then we, we follow the journeys of three black brewers in different parts of the country as they just try to make it in the industry and you know and hustle their beer and get it out and that sounds you know, awesome. we also tell the story of the first black beer festival in u.s history sure um formerly called fresh fest now it's been rebranded into two different names but that's part of the film as well and just kind of a, a number of initiatives and, and organizations out there that are really advancing people of color in, in the beer industry so that's that yeah. we, we went in that. there and just went for it and four years later here we are what sparked kind of that and your your foray into that subject matter like what oh, well for us it started i mean um especially back in Asheville, north carolina yeah you know one of the big beer cities yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely exactly and that's where we first let's say discovered craft beer sure and that got us into craft beer but then we started traveling around going to breweries and we started noticing that hey we're the only people of color sure. in the breweries behind the bar but also as a patron and that sparked the curiosity. So, you know, going to um, beer festivals around the country as well and noticing the same thing. Very few people have color there. Sure. So, and then one day, right, you came across the, I think on Facebook, right? About the... Oh, about Fresh, Fresh Fest, Fest yeah. the first one. Yeah, and then I was also learning about the Pink Boot Society yeah. that yeah. was, a, well, is, not was, but is the world's largest nonprofit for the advancement of women in beer at, yeah. at uh, varying levels. And they're, of the beer they're active internationally as well. Yeah, active the, internationally. The US. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know of the Pink Boot Society. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we got together with them and they have a small piece in the film and um, just learning about the the statistics that were out there from the brewers association sure and they support independent beer across the country yeah. so learning about the statistics and that that they were collecting at the time because back uh four or five years ago um beer sales were starting to flatline and the reason for that is because they weren't diversifying their clientele and sure. also you can point to that having to do with not diverse having a as diverse brewery ownership and staff and whatnot so you know, they started collecting data sure. to kind of understand what was going on. And you know, in 2018, they brought on an, an equity and inclusion partner, which is the first time they ever did that. Wow. Um, just to kind of better understand the changing trends in the beer industry. So then I, you know, dug into it deeper and realized that, okay, so less than 1% of, at the time, 
between six and seven thousand breweries, less than one percent were black owned. Wow. Yeah. Today, closer to nine thousand, still less than one percent black owned. Wow. Yeah, because so you keep getting all the breweries opening, right? Sure. Yeah. The percentage stays the stays same. Stays the same. Exactly. That is wow. such a small percentage. Yeah. So that's what what kind of got me as a documentary filmmaker curious yeah. to dig deeper and learn more mm -hmm. and connect with people that are passionate about the beer and we wanted to make a film that you know shined a spotlight on them because all the other films that had been done to date didn't do that mm -hmm. so we wanted to use you know our similar cultural experiences as the folks we were documenting to tell their story yeah i love that i think that is a remarkable lens to kind of frame the story through but i also think uh i i can't I can't think of a single documentary that's tackled that subject no, matter. This is a very which unique. is amazing and rare to find a story that just hasn't been told at all. Yeah. Um, so how important and awesome is that? Uh, that's that's amazing. So you said a four year process of making this film yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. we, we we came up with the idea around fall of 2017. Started researching late 2017. By 2018, we had started doing like little recon research sh shooting trips. Sure. And then we had a full blown kind of cast to follow from that point forward. And the pandemic happened. We yeah. did that part of the film because yep. their careers and, and kind of businesses Sh were shifting. Sure. Yeah, so we hard. figured, why not? It adds drama, but you also want to see what these people are going through. Of course. Through and kind of reinvent themselves and continue to push forward sure. amidst yeah. the, you know, the turbulent times we were going through. And then. 20 and the 2020 started cutting and here we are that's yeah. amazing yeah. absolutely amazing yeah. how did you find the um people that you focused on in the film so some of them we found at fresh fest sure beer festival we went to um others were reaching out to us after we had been at fresh fest because we actually ended up producing a short documentary about oh fresh awesome fest. okay and it was kind of done as a way to pre-market one pint at sure. a time and also with the plans of expanding that film into one pint at a time and adding to it. Sure, absolutely. And always with the with the goal of keeping the Fresh Fest portion in the project. It's kind of mm. like the connecting glue between all these different brewers. Sure. Um, so we found some of them at Fresh Fest, and then the others we kind of cast later. Sure. You know, that weren't part of Fresh Fest, and that's kind of... And, yeah. and the Black Brewing community is so small, so once you get vetted and then it's like they say you're legit you're yeah. sure when you're not here to like exploit or there you go to steal steal a, a story mm -hmm. you know because they say you know people with more privilege they come in they take the story sure. they run off and that's it no we're going through we were going through similar experiences it's also, yeah it's part, in, in uh, our experience is part of it too as they were because that's why we made the film and mm -hmm. for the co-founders of fresh fest that's why they made the festival because they were the only black people in tap rooms so sure to that. yeah i love that yeah. so that kind of like synergy yeah allowed us to kind of be, have an in with different with other black yeah. breweries across the country who'd kind of heard about us and wanted us to tell their story so we had Kind of like a luxury problem at that point. Sure. Like, who do we focus on? <laughs> who do I so, choose? <laughs> so, uh, you know, being a documentary filmmaker, I want to focus on the ones that still needed to grow. Yeah. Or the ones that were kind of in the middle of their journeys, but were going through some nonsense, so sure. to speak, that we cover in the film. Sure. So that we can sh share with the world that there's still a lot of inequality in the in the industry and a lot of just unfair things that are happening to black birds yeah. still to this day but i think it, i mean our goal is to for have to have them use it as a tool yeah. maybe to start that conversation Absolutely. about diversity equity and inclusion right and it's i mean it our film is about the beer industry but it's not just about that right sure it's, it's happening in other That's industries. Just a, that is a yeah. framing industry, device you know the same thing is happening mm -hmm. other industries as well sure so it's, I think it's a good conversation starter. Yeah. I totally agree. I have to ask, um, and I don't want to go into any sort of spoiler document or <laughs> territory on it, but did all of the breweries that you were following survive the pandemic? Did everybody that you were talking with, did they make it through relatively unscathed? What are we, what you don't do you have, have to call to anyone out, out in I mean, particular? You, you can come watch it at a book center okay. at, at 3.15 And tomorrow. see for ourselves? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No spoilers. No that, spoilers. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, I, I definitely want to. I mean, Some did, and the others maybe did. Sure. Yeah. We'll see. Oh. Uh, now, as far as uh, documentary film, um, is that something you've done before, mm -hmm. previously? Um, yes. What was the subject matter of your films previously? 
So all of the films that I doc, you know, that I tend to focus on in the past sure. have like a deal with like social impact, you know, sure. social, cultural, multicultural, as much as I can do, do yeah. it because I like, you know, making films that can have some kind of, you know, effect on the conversation, you know, moving sure. the needle in, in a certain direction. Yeah. So everything from LGBTQ youth to LGBTQ history to indigenous Taiwanese cultures cool. to uh, Caribbean women um, mm -hmm. in Aruba to, let's see, um, immigration. Yep, yeah, one. Did one. Another documentary we have on the circuit right now is uh, deals with um, educational volunteerism at the Texas, uh, Mexico, U.S. border. Sure. So yeah. a number of different things and, and Lots you know, of marginalized much, groups of people. Yes, focusing on those that don't have a voice or if they have yeah. a voice, it's not loud enough so we can, you know, use our platform to help them. Amplify yeah, it. that's fantastic. I have a question as a as a filmmaker. Um, how do you approach, because you, you said something that really kind of piqued my interest in that once you were kind of vetted by these breweries and they didn't feel like they were being, you know, exploited or their story was being taken, when you're dealing with, you know, people with a, a marginalized group of, of people as the subject matter for your documentary, how do you, how do you approach that from a way of not sensationalizing, but instead, you know, actually telling that story and giving voice to instead of making spectacle of? Relating to them as people. Yeah. And really not having cameras around. Yeah. Because ultimately, at least, I guess with, with narrative filmmaking as well, fiction films, you know, documentary films, this is especially true. You end up making lifelong friends. Sure. Yeah. And that's kind of how you want to go into it, yeah. is building a relationship with the folks, you know, for whom you are making what's important to them important to you. Right. Right. So then you don't, don't talk about the film much. Sure. You know, they, they know you're a filmmaker, but you kind of try to understand the full scope of what's going on. Yeah. And and take your time with it. And, and it certainly helps beer, social lubricant. So of course. It always they, you have yeah. some drinks, you people open together. Up, you open up and up before you know it, they're telling you, they're like, wait, relax. <laughs> this is a great story. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, no, we'll talk about this on the sure. interview. And yeah. you're like, score. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you know, like so it's a matter of having time and sometimes you don't have that luxury sure you might need some luck yeah but you always have to approach them as people because ultimately that's who they are they're, sure they're people they're human beings just like you sure and you want to relate to them sure sincerely and you want to connect with them sure just as friends yeah you know? I, I love that and I, you happen to have cameras and it it allows them to give you access because i find that the best documentaries have access you yeah. can tell you know, they woke up, they were like, you know, doing things in the house. It's like, how did you get a camera there for sure? Yeah. yeah. Because you yeah. built a relationship yeah. with them. They trusted trust. you. Yeah. yeah. You built trust. They're like, hey, I'm going to, you know, do you want to, they, they keep you abreast of what's yeah. happening in their lives. You know, communication that improves. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I totally understand that because you're absolutely right. I've seen plenty and, and many documentary films where you can tell that the story was put together in the editing room. You know what I mean? You can mm -hmm. tell that they were making a story out mm -hmm. of what they had because maybe they didn't have that level of you know involvement and inclusion in their subjects lives. You know what I mean? Instead they were you know kind of third party observers. Okay well I recorded this and maybe mm -hmm. we'll just kind of piece this together to, story together to look sort of. you know um, like what you needed. So I really admire and appreciate that when you get that sort of access because it feels genuine. And I think that's important for documentaries, especially in today's times of like things being kind of unsure of like who, what stories are real stories that you're being told. Mm -hmm. I think that that helps differentiate and set things apart is when you, you can tell that you're telling a genuine story. You can tell that these, you are now getting a window into these these individuals lives and understanding their experience through their eyes mm -hmm. you know yeah and i find it in this particular instance it's also very personal to us because we're well I don't know, craft beer nerd, you could say ish. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, we're no, having, no, like craft beer. Don't ask me how the beer is made. I wouldn't be able to tell. You. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I know what I can't like. Tell you because we're <laughs> sure. not interested in home brewing or knowing all of the ins and outs, even though we kind of understand some of it. Sure. Yeah. You know? Being around but, it for but, long but, enough, yeah, you but get we're understanding. Completely into like the complexity of the taste. Sure. And just drinking great beer everywhere we go and meeting new people. 
Sure. Because beer is an adventure. Yeah. Beer yeah. Is, is life. It's an adventure. Definitely. Get, like here, we, you know, we, we went to Hopping Gnome. We went to Central Standard. I'm, I'm drinking some Hopping Gnome right yeah. now, as yeah. a matter of fact. These are great breweries, you know, and you find a couple of great breweries everywhere that you go. Sure. And no two beers are ever the same. So sure. it's always yeah. a, a fun thing to do while you're somewhere new. Yeah. It's know? a discovery. It's an exploration yeah. of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, now, the one of the great beer pleasures of life, drinking and eating. So 100%. <laughs> no, to my couldn't agree my more. <laughs> the craft beer industry has blown up so much in the last 30 years, 40 mm -hmm. years. And it's interesting because... I worked in the craft beer industry for about nine years and I would go to a lot of beer festivals and I met a lot of brewers and small startups and it's a very tight knit in industry. Everyone knows each other. Everyone's very friendly and helpful. I, now that we are talking about this, there was very little diversity. There really was. And thinking back on these beer festivals and things and the great American beer festival in Denver, oh, Jesus, I yes. went there so many years, worked it. It was a great time, but, and it's it's every state brings breweries in and sure. they have the whole convention mm -hmm. center mapped out. It is very it is not diverse. We'll just say that. Yeah. It is not diverse. Yeah. And it's interesting because I had never really considered it. And I think that is super, super important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and our field focuses on on black people, right? But you think diversity is women as well. Yeah. Like us women. Sure. Mm -hmm. Women owning the breweries, making the beer, marketing the beer. That's all involved in that as well. And I, I think it is changing slowly, you know, becoming yeah. more diverse, but there's definitely more work. Yeah. yeah. And the Pink Boot Society, I thought it was a great organization. I knew a lot of women that were a part of it. And where mm -hmm. I was from, they had a big like chapter of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so many more groups of people that yeah. sort of need that, you know, yeah. and this is, I think, a good way to shed light on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, we, we cover a little bit of that in the film, too. What you just brought up is like kind of what is happening within the black brewing community that is allowing them to connect and share resources, you know, kind of like similar to a pink boot society yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Helping each other. Yes. There's a little yeah. bit of that in the film too. So it gives you a tease of what's to come for that community. Well, I'll tell you first and foremost, I'm sold. I want to check the film out. <laughs> yeah. Can you remind folks again where they can see it and when this weekend they can see it? Yeah. So at the Wilkes center tomorrow, Saturday, right? 315. Perfect. 3 Excellent. Um, thank you so much for sitting down with us. We sincerely appreciate it. This sounds like a fantastic film. Yeah. I love the concept. I love the idea. Absolutely check it out. One pint at a time. Tallgrass Film Festival. This is the kind of stuff we've been telling you about. Fantastic films that I don't know that you can really sink your teeth into. Find us or, on social if you yes, can. Yeah. Yes, please let let them know where can they find you and the film. One Fine Film. So, so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, One Fine Film. Very easy. -E P I N T F I L M. The same, and, and even the website O A O N E F I uh, P I N T F I L M dot com. Easy, fantastic. Easy. Go check it out. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Enjoy the yeah. rest of your festival. Enjoy the screening yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> I'll see if we can get away. I want to see it. I so maybe I can I convince somebody to sit in for me tomorrow while I go watch it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Well. Thank you.